Up until 300 years ago, all of us had only one thought in our minds, farming. Farming was synonym of subsistence, and subsistence was synonym of surviving. There was no escape. Today, we are basically taking food production for granted. We do not correlate hunger with crops, fresh meals with good weather, and some of our children don't even correlate an egg with chickens. What if I tell you that our children in the next 30 years will need to handle the concept of farming for surviving? Some of you may know this man. Well, according to him, all of us here should have died of hunger. Thomas Malthus was considered one of the most important scientists in his century. Basically, he supposed that while the population grows like a parabola, the resources of the earth are limited and food production can only grow like a straight line. It means that the food available in 2000s is more or less the same quantity of the one available 100 years after. We are totally sure that Malthus was wrong. And the reason is that he did not consider a tiny little detail, innovation. Norman Burlot, in 1944, in Mexico, disrupted food production and began the Green Revolution. Thanks to his research, the same piece of land can guarantee a production more than 10 times higher than before. Nowadays, we can feed the major part of world's population without being afraid of food shortages in the next years. That's why the sandwich that you bought for lunch did not ruin your finances. By 2050, will be 10 billion souls hanging around this little planet. But today, 80% of the lands available for farming are already in use. To get more, we cut our forests. And to keep our lands productive, we cannot avoid using chemicals and pesticides. The number one collateral effect of the Green Revolution and also one of the main reasons for cancers and a lot of other diseases. If the population keeps growing like this, more than one billion people will have no access to food at all. We need a second green revolution. This will be one of the hardest challenges for humanity so far. But you know what? We can do it thanks to vertical urban farmers. Forget about lands, pesticides, soil. In the future, all our lands will finally take a break. Thanks to vertical farming, our cities and our homes will look more like this. We'll be able to grow plants inside buildings, in multiple stories. Do you know how many advantages there are to grow plants inside our homes in our obsolete model of producing food in the countries and then moving it inside the cities, one tomato traveled 2,900 kilometers in average. With vertical farming, we cut pollution related to transport and have less emissions. Growing plants inside a building means that they grow in a controlled environment where no pesticides are needed. So, we have less chemicals. In addition, all the nutrients are recycled by the device and the water. And the only thing that actually leaves the building is the product. So, we have less waste. What's more, plants grow without soil, by hydroponics. Thanks to it, we finally know which nutrients we are giving to them, and they will be absorbed directly from water, making the plants growing stronger, faster, and healthier. And they taste even better. 
if we put a vertical farm in a space as big as this theater, we can have a production of 340,000 plants with no impact for the environment at all. Currently, only 1% of farmland is being used by organic farmers. Unfortunately, we cannot go 100% because it won't be sustainable. But with vertical farming, we are taking lands out of the picture. Soil is no longer necessary for growing plants and we generate high yields in a quick manner. So finally some lands can be freed up for organic farmers. For these reasons, I decided to take part to the second green revolution and it became also my challenge. I was a university student and I basically look like a child that tells to his mom, I want to solve the issue of hunger in the world. That actually is what I told to my teacher when I was seven. Anyway, I decided let's make it real. And I applied for the most disruptive startup academy that Europe has seen over the last decade, Innovation Lab, the health kitchen of startups. 200 university students, teams of four people, different backgrounds, have to create something new in three months, not three years like most of research centers. With all this pressure, we try to figure something out in this challenge. Even though NESA has been working on the subject since 1980s, vertical farming will be the future. It will solve plenty of problems related to food production but there is even something more that we can do. We'll make plants growing by themselves. At the 2015 World Wide Web Conference, we came up with the idea of World Farm. I want you to meet the key component. She is called Lia, Lean Intelligent Agriculture. Say hi. Hello, everyone. I'm Lia, the electronic farmer. I will take care of the plants at a push of a single button. You just sit down and enjoy. Wherever there is lack of expertise, from Europe to Brazil to Somalia, I am the solution. Also in your own house, you can have vertical farms. With me, the only concern is to pick and eat the product. Every one of us, whether we live in a tiny flat or in a big house, whether we work eight hours a day or part-time, can become a farmer again. And maybe in the near future, we'll also be self-sustainable again. It will be amazing being a farmer. Meanwhile, you run a company. Solve other people's low problems. Be student. Our environment will say thanks. And our children will do too. I invite you to join the second green revolution. Let's build our peaceful and prosperous future together because moving vertical is moving forward. Thank you.